Jake Paul's latest fight with boxer Ryan Borland has stirred up a bit of discussion online regarding the future of Jake's boxing career and his opponents going forward. Even though Ryan was considered a pro boxer with a 17-2 boxing record, Jake got the guy out of there in a single round. Ryan was a deer in headlights and didn't look like he should belong in there at all with Jake Paul, which brings into question Jake's position in the sport. Jake Paul got his start by fighting YouTubers, then athletes, then retired MMA fighters who were 20 years older than him. Even though these were unconventional opponent choices, each Jake Paul fight was a steady level up in competition. These fights with ex-MMA stars eventually led to the Tommy Fury boxing match, where Tommy beat Jake very convincingly. I remember Jake winning maybe two rounds, but overall Tommy was leading the dance and simply outboxed him. Ever since the Tommy fight, Jake Paul has been trying to build his boxing resume by fighting people with winning records, but don't have the same skill level as a Tommy Fury. In the past couple of months, Jake fought a guy with a 10-1 record and cleaned him up in a round, and then the same thing happened last weekend when he beat up a 17-2 guy. These two pro boxers were retired and only came back to fight Jake Paul for an easy payday, which is understandable from their point of view, but Jake got them out of there in no time. Andre August, who was Jake Paul's last opponent, and Ryan Borland were guys who stopped boxing altogether a few years back and were cherry picked by Jake's team to hand them a couple of easy highlight reel knockouts. Jake Paul fighting retired boxers with padded records has come under scrutiny by others, and I think it's warranted. Almost all high level boxers do this at the start of their career, and it's a perfect way to pad out their records and to make them seem more impressive than they actually are at the time. However, the quality that Jake Paul doesn't have that these pro boxers do is ring time, and that's where the issue lies with Jake fighting these retired cans and knocking them out in a single round. Jake Paul needs time in the ring to get better under the lights and improve his actual boxing skills. He does not need first round knockout finishes of the retired part time boxers. So what's the solution? Where does Jake Paul go from here after easily beating no name opponents? In his next non-pay-per-view fight, Jake Paul should fight tough Journeyman to continue his boxing career. Journeyman won't have the best boxing skills in the world, so Jake won't be getting outclassed or outpointed if they fight. However, they will be tough to knock out, which should give Jake some experience, which he desperately needs right now, especially if he ever wants to beat Tommy Fury in some kind of rematch. Real dogfights with mean opposition, even if they're unknown, would be a logical step forward for Jake Paul's career. People online like to make fun of Jake Paul for fighting a retired MMA fighters, but one, these fights were pretty early on in Jake Paul's boxing career, and you know, before he actually knew what he was doing. And two, the likes of Tyron Woodley and Anderson Silva have fought the best guys in their respective field. These aren't journeymen, they do know how to box somewhat, even though their discipline isn't necessarily boxing. They do know how to strike, obviously. Anderson Silva or Tyron Woodley would also knock out both of his recent opponents in a round. Even though boxing is a sweet science and all that shit, Anderson Silva, a 50 year old UFC fighter, knows way more about striking than a lot of pro boxers with winning records. I've started to hate the term pro boxer in regards to the Jake Paul discussion and the argument that he should fight pro boxers. He has, guys with winning records, and they were useless. Although I love Pineda, he is another pro boxer quote unquote who would get schooled by a lot of YouTube boxers. Just because you have a box rack and you are labeled a pro boxer with a record, it doesn't mean you're automatically going to be better than a YouTuber who trains every single day or a striker who has competed in the UFC at a championship level. When we're talking about Jake Paul leveling up his competition, we need to get more specific about what type of fighters he needs to face. Like I said, people have retired from from the sport years ago and only trained part time won't be beneficial for Jake's boxing career. He'll get them out of there early and that might boost his confidence level, but what are you really learning in these fights? Fuck all to be honest. Someone like Tommy Fury was a skill above Jake when they fought, but it wasn't like he got embarrassed or brutally knocked out or something. Tommy was better on the night, 
but Tommy is still an influencer boxer caliber of fighter. I mean KSI arguably beat him in October, so a rematch with Jake Paul is not out of the question later down the road. However, I do think that fight should be later down the road, and not something Jake should rush into, especially after fighting the level opposition he has been in his last two non-pay-per-view fights. The matchmakers working with Jake should put him up against a natural cruiserweight journeyman. I'm not saying they need to even have a huge winning boxing record, but this supposed opponent should have at least been in there with decent opposition and survived. True Geordie mentioned in his last video that Anise Taj would be a suitable fight for Jake to have. This guy fought Vidal Riley, who was going to be a world champion one day, but he was durable and didn't go down without a fight. He may not have the best record, but he knows how to be a tough, decent test for some of the top cruiserweight prospects. So yeah, to put it simply, Jake needs to share the ring with a strong guy who has a bit of skill. Obviously not skilled to a championship level, but to a decent standard in order to force Jake to think about what he's actually doing in there, rather than just throwing haymakers and knocking cans out. 